What's going on guys? Rebombi teacher in the house and I'm back with another episode of Ask Rebombi. You know what this is. You ask me questions, I answer them. This goes on at the end of every month. I'm going to try and make this a monthly series. You guys have been asking me questions. If you want to know how to get your question in one of these videos, down below is a link to my Discord if you're not already in it. I strongly recommend you do. I post a lot of announcements in there, including when I'm streaming, when my videos goes up, when my friends are streaming, and any cool ideas or if I want some suggestions from you guys, Discord is the best place to go. In that Discord server, there is a channel called Ask Me Questions, so if you have a question for me at any time, whether it's Pokemon related, whether it's about me, or whether you just want a bit of a laugh, uh, pop your question in there, and if I think it's funny or whatever, I'll put it in the video. Simple as that. So, without further ado, let's get right into the questions. Question number one. What advice would you give to people that are starting as streamers? This came from my friend Ari, who I met recently. Um, Ari is just starting out his stream. Uh, I'm not really the most qualified person to answer this question, to be brutally honest, because I'm not really a big creator, if I have to be honest. But I'll quite happily tell you the advice that I was given when I started. Uh, the first thing really is always use webcam. Now, webcam is a bit of a controversial one for a lot of people. Um, I personally find um, I tend to gravitate more towards streamers with webcam. I think it's much easier to connect with the content creator. Um, if you are a small time creator and you have a webcam, I think it's much easier to connect with your audience. Uh, without a webcam is fine, but for me personally, I think webcam is always better. Uh, but that being said, I do follow streamers um, who don't use webcam. They don't feel comfortable using webcam and that's fine too. Uh, next thing. Um, I didn't do this when I first started was have my own Discord server. Um, Discord is a really good way to kind of connect with your audience on and off stream. Um, you can have your Discord open while you're um, streaming and have some of your viewers come in and join you. So long as your viewers don't like troll you to oblivion or whatever um, or like make obscene remarks or whatever. Uh, my community does, doesn't really do that so... Um, it's fine. It's nice to have that additional company. Uh, it definitely helps. Um, gives you somebody guaranteed to talk to. I know it can be very difficult when you're first starting. When I first started streaming, I was streaming to two people. And both of those two people were in my Discord in car with me. So I had nobody actively uh, chatting to me. But eventually, as time goes by, uh, you gain a bit of a following. Uh, the third one I think is one of the most important ones is network with other streamers that are doing the same things as you. Uh, this one happens quite often. Um, for me personally, like if I um, make a friend with another streamer who streams the same game as me, um, generally certain members of their community will come over and support me as well. And then they'll have friends and then you gradually kind of build up a slow little network of streamer friends. Those guys will give a common audience for you guys, and that's how you get a following. Um, when I first started streaming, quite a while back last year, I got double hosted by two other streamers that were playing the same game as me. I went from having two people in my chat that were in my Discord to having 50 people in my chat and having no idea what the heck happened. <laughs> um, so it's definitely a fun experience, but I think if you network with other people, you'll get a lot more support. Um, it can be tricky um, when you first start. It can definitely be tricky. Uh, my b base up, my follower base is currently sitting at just over 230 right now, uh, which is not bad. Uh, I've definitely grown surprisingly more than I thought I would, considering the kind of content I'm making. But I definitely think those are the main ones. So um, webcam definitely think is something I prefer. Um, I think it's optional, but I think it's a good way to connect with your audience, have your own Discord, network with other people, uh, always a good way to go. Um, I'll actually talk a bit more about networking in a bit, because uh, I know another question is in here that will be an interesting one to talk about. Uh, I think the other thing is play games that you enjoy playing, right? Because it's all very well playing the AAA titles or playing the games that the pros play. You know, a lot of people stream League of Legends, a lot of people stream CSGO, uh, these kind of big eSport type games. Those markets are massively saturated, but if you're streaming something that you enjoy playing, even if it's a game that most people don't haven't heard of, people will largely come to support you. Um, and then they might get interest in the game and they might start playing the game themselves. You never quite know, but they... I think stick to what you enjoy, don't try and be a market slave. Um, but again, that does depend on your goals. And I think for me, 
having realistic goals is a really important thing as well. Right? You're not going to be the next um, big League of Legends streamer. You're not going to be the next big Pokemon streamer. Right? You're not going to be that. The market's too saturated and Twitch discovery is garbage. Right? You're not going to be that. But I think that's um, something you got to understand. Is you got to build things up over time and be uh, grateful to what audience you do have. Because every streamer is lucky to have an audience. Okay? That's something that I take quite a lot of value in myself at. Huh. I spent quite a lot of time on that question. Whoops. <laughs> Alright, so question two. Let's have a look here. What do we have for question two? This one was an interesting one. It actually came up on Twitter. Um, are other Twitch streamers competitors or co-workers? Now, I actually briefly talked about this on my last stream. Uh, a couple of my um, viewers had a go at answering it themselves. Now, my opinion is kind of they're a bit of both um, in a way. Uh, to me personally, I think if you're streaming the same thing and you have similar goals as someone and you're willing to network with them and kind of go along that journey together, to me, I would consider that a co-worker type relationship. Um, but if you're streaming with somebody somebody else that's kind of trying to take a similar audience to you, caters the same audience, has the same goals as you, and they're not really networking with you, then they're your competitors. So it's... It's an interesting thing. For me, streaming was never really meant to be an income um, source for me. Uh, I never planned to be like a, a big streamer. You know, thousands of followers, 100 followers a stream, whatever. Like, that was never really in mind. My goals for streaming was to help overcome my own mental health and my own challenges, as well as provide a platform for other mental health sufferers to kind of understand that they're not alone. And give them a place where they can be positive, be happy, um, have a bit of banter with people. Which is something that people with social anxiety issues really struggle with. Um, it definitely happens a lot. But yeah, for me that's something that uh, I'm quite interested in. Uh, for me personally, I think there's definitely elements of both. But I've networked with quite a lot of people that stream or make content for YouTube. And I'm always glad that I have them. Those guys are very good friends of mine, and I definitely support them highly. Uh, so for me personally, this question varies depending on the people that are involved. Uh, I think that's the main way to look at it. Alright, next question. My streamlabs are being a little bit slow, do apologize. What's your favorite villain group slash evil team? Um, so this one's kind of a hard one for me to answer because for me, evil teams in Pokemon have never really been that impressive. Um, you know, obviously you've got Team Rocket, the, the original ones from the first two gens, actually were kind of a good evil team in a way to have because um, basically for them it was always a question of like they were just trying to get up, control all the Pokemon in the world, right? They were trying to dominate the world through having full control of every Pokemon. Which is a kind of evil in itself, but it's not like inherently a destroying the world. It's kind of like that perfect balance of an evil team without being like game breaking. And then afterwards you kind of had the weak Team Aqua and Team Magma in Gen 3, which was kind of overdrawn out and potentially not really that intuitive to me. That wasn't really that good. The logic was always flawed. Uh, their whole evil purposes just weren't really that good to me um and team galactic team plasma um just not really that good to me they don't they were just kind of annoying their teams and stuff were not really that good um and then there's team flare of course team flare is okay uh, i like the outfit they wore i like the kind of stylistic approach they tried to take um and then, of course, you had Team Skull, which kind of weren't really much of an evil team, to be honest. They were just kind of an annoyance, um, as opposed to being evil. Um, and then, of course, you had Macrocosmos and Gen 8, uh, which actually was a really good evil team, because you kind of didn't really know they existed until later on. Uh, you kind of had suspicions that they might have existed. A lot of people thought Team Yell was the evil team, but they kind of aren't. They're just a group of hooligans that's supporting money. So... In terms of like who my favorite evil team is, I think I have to just say Team Rocket, honestly. I don't think any of the other villain groups or evil teams have really stood up to Team Rocket in terms of like the character development, in terms of the actual story. 
um, in terms of the lore or anything like that. I just don't really think they stand up to Team Rocket at all. I think Macrocosmos is probably close. Um, I think Macrocosmos is a very well designed evil team. Um, but yeah, for me, I think Team Rocket has to be the best one for my. Uh, I can't think of anyone that immediately jumps out as better. Alright, number four, next question. Why can't I beat you in a draft league match? This comes from one of my friends, Burgers. I've played him a few times and I've beaten him every time. Uh, that happens a lot for a lot of players. Um, people sometimes do get frustrated when they can't beat certain players in draft league match. Currently, my kryptonite is my good friend, Shadow AX. Uh, he gives me all kinds of problems. Um, I think a lot of the time there are going to be players that stylistically he just outmatch you. They're kind of just too strong, or they just have different ways of thinking that you just can't account for. Uh, one of my great personal strengths is my team building. Uh, so I'm very good at trying to build teams to counter opponents, and that's something that I do very well. Um, I think sometimes it's a case of I can find an avenue or find advantages that are really frustrating. But I wouldn't necessarily go as far as to say you can't beat me. I just think you haven't managed to yet. Now, you did beat me in a random battle, Burgers. Um, but that's kind of different. Draft League is a different animal. Uh, but I do think in time you will beat me. You know, it happens. Like, people beat me once in a while. I'm not invincible. You know, nobody is. Um, but I think there's a lot to be said um, for people playing Draft League. I think it's a really tough discipline to learn. Um, but I think eventually anyone who has lost to me all the time will eventually beat me at one point. You know, people will, will catch up. And that's the fun of it for me. It's like who catches me up, who plays well. And that's where it goes for me. Alright, next question. What do you think about Bishop? Now Bishop is my good friend Dentex, aka Ripter's favorite Pokemon. Um... Bishop's kind of an in, in an interesting spot right now. Uh, Bishop has obviously one of my favorite shinies is that royal blue color. I really like it quite a lot as a shiny. Um, I think Bishop's kind of in an unfortunate spot that it kind of doesn't have access to knockoff at the moment. So it doesn't have a good way to hit through Toxapax. Um, that's kind of a bit of an unfortunate situation for it. However, it's always been like a nice like late game cleaner. It does have access to the Defiant ability, which is always nice. Um, giving him an attack boost on any stat drop. Uh, that's really good. Uh, a good answer against something like Sticky Webs. Giving you a plus two attack for the trade off of minus speed. Uh, does also get Swords Dance itself, but it, its main access point is Sucker Punch. Um, the nice thing about Bishop is it doesn't really get checked by fairy types because of its steel typing. Iron Head actually two shots Clefable at plus two, so that's something to note if you didn't already know that. Um, but yeah, like I think Bishop's an okay revenge killer. I think it's a good late game cleaner. Um, but for me personally, I feel like Bishop's missing knockoff and it really needs it back. Like Throw Chop is okay, but it's not super good. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the same like reliability or spam ability that knockoff had So I think Bishop's in an interesting spot. I think once Pokemon home comes out and once move tutors and egg moves come back um, I think Bishop is gonna be really interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how it improves um, Later on, but we'll see it's in an awkward spot right now, especially with things like Concauda running around um, Especially things like Lucario running around Bishop doesn't really handle any of those very well, so We'll see. Next up. How did you get in a draft league and what Pokemon would you like to draft this gen? This came from my good friend Tyler, of course. Um, I got into draft league a few years ago, mostly as a kind of front office member, as a bit of a team builder. Um, a friend of mine was joining a league with their friends. Um, and I was just like... Uh, he basically reached out to me as like, mate, I am really struggling with this. Can you give me a hand? So I helped him build his team and he basically smashed his opponent. Um, and since then, I kind of just carried on helping people build. People started to get to know me as a team builder. So I started joining other people's front offices. And for a good couple of years, I was pretty much just a front office member. I didn't really have time to participate actively myself. Um, but I decided last year after finally getting my PC built and everything and being able to make content and stuff that I thought I'd step into the breach as my as my own coach. Like I'd subbed in and did a couple of battles with people, but that's about as far as it got for me. 
Um, I never really went further than that, and that was kind of an, a bit of an unfortunate thing. I did actually win the majority of the uh, matches I did sub in for, so I definitely showed to be an okay player, but I just never had um, much of a belief to actually be my own coach. And then last year, I decided to step into the breach. Um, Denistria was looking for a replacement player. Um, I'd mentioned to him before that I might be interested in playing. Um, and yeah, that's basically how it started. I joined the GPL back in Season 0. Uh, halfway through the season, I uh, was literally bottom of the league when I took the team over. And then ended up winning three games in a row, made the finals of the league. So uh, that's where the Royal Bournemouth for Bombies, the team logo above me, comes from. That's when it started. And since then, I've played in multiple draft leagues. I've won multiple draft league titles, three ADL titles, a couple of other like social league titles as well. Uh, also a showdown team league title. So it's definitely interesting. Now, as for what I'd like to draft... I mean, I drafted Dracovish um, in the ADL. I definitely quite enjoyed using Dracovish. Um, I kind of want to try things like Grimmsnarl in draft. I think Grimmsnarl will be interesting because it is quite versatile. Um, I like things like Conkeldo quite a lot. Um, I want to try things like Duraludon and Dragapult. I think those will be really interesting in draft. Uh, Duraludon is kind of tricky to figure out how to play against. It's really versatile Pokemon. Um... Other than that, like, obviously Rabombi is always kind of high on my list of Pokemon I really like. It is my mascot, after all. It is a Pokemon I know very well. Um, so I definitely would like to draft Rabombi, but most of the time it gets sniped from me, and I'm really not surprised. Uh, most people know how good my Rabombi can be when I get a hold of it. But yeah, there's quite a lot of Pokemon I'm interested in. I'm interested in things like Sandaconda. Um, Sandaconda is definitely an interesting Pokemon. Got decent physical bulk. Um... There's a lot of cool Pokemon out there, um, so it's definitely interesting. Aegislash in the GPL is finally allowed after it got some nerfs, um, so that's always interesting. So yeah, there's a lot of really cool Pokemon that I want to try out, um, so it's going to be interesting. The GPL draft hasn't happened yet, uh, that'll happen sometime next month, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, and let's move on. Alright, next question. I think we're starting into the troll questions now. Yep, here comes Punch's question. I promised him I'd put in the video. If two trains are traveling in opposite directions, one at 90 kilometers an hour and the other 30 nautical miles an hour, how long will it be till Brexit happens? Uh, Brexit is actually supposed to be happening the 31st of January, which is actually the time I'm recording this video, funnily enough. Uh, so hopefully by the time this video goes up, we're actually out and all of this Brexit nonsense is over. Obviously, some of my friends overseas have been joking, calling me Mr. Brexit and various other things like that. And that's fine. I'm all, all game for a bit of banter. It's about the only good thing that comes out of Brexit, to be honest, is the banter. So, uh, I appreciate it. But yeah, like Brexit's due to be happening the 31st of January. Whether it actually does or not, time will tell. Alright, next question. Why would you name a Stunfisk after me? This came from my good friend Melissa. Uh, this came when I was doing um, the Diamond and Pearl Soul Link with Tyler on stream. Um, my good friend Melissa rather jokingly said in chat, I once got jump scared by a Stunfisk once, so I immediately named it after her as a memory. <laughs> Such a troll thing to do. But you know what? It's kind of funny. Um... Obviously, like, Melissa and I have known each other for years, so I know it's all banter and everything like that, but yeah. <laughs> She'll call me a jerk as much as she wants, but it's all love, really. Uh, I do appreciate it. It's pretty funny. Alright, next. Is water wet? Now, there is actually a genuine scientific answer to this. I know Nitro is sending this just to troll me. The actual water itself, even though it's a liquid, is not actually wet, but the process of actually making something wet is when water sticks to a material. That's basically the actual answer for it. Uh, so, yeah, that's the actual answer. But, yeah, the other answer I was going to give was slightly different and not appropriate for YouTube, so I probably better not answer that one. Uh, Nitro can probably guess what that is. Alright, uh, last question I got... For this video comes from Denistrio, of course, Officer Jenny or Nurse Joy. Now, I'm a security officer by profession at this point, so I have a bit of a soft spot for police officers. Uh, part of my work is to actually assist the police, um, especially in certain incidents and things like that. So, uh, I'm a bit of a soft spot for officers. I'm not a huge fan of Nurse Joy, especially the more recent Nurse Joy designs. I prefer the older ones a lot more. Uh, but, yeah, gotta be Officer Jenny. 
All right. <laughs> but, yep, that's all the questions I had this month. If you've got any more questions you'd like to ask me, feel free to leave them in my Discord or ask me on Twitter or send them to me privately. But, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm going to get on out of here. My name is Robombi Teacher. I'm a coach of the Raw Bomber for Bombies. Stay safe. Stay awesome. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.